Hello folks, thanks for stopping by. I wanted to share a couple photos of another restoration that I've been working on as of late. The radio is a Remington radio uh, manufactured on the West Coast, probably in the mid-30s. It's a TRF uh, radio receiver. Here's a couple photos again of the the dial plate moving quickly, uh, a couple shots of the chassis, and again you'll see that there's uh, some rust there that will require some attention as well. Here's another quick look at the uh, variable tuning condenser and the associated hardware and a close-up look of the antenna coil. Again, there's just, uh, you know, years of dust and grime. This thing's probably been uh, placed in a barn or was placed in a barn uh, for storage. So uh, I've seen worse and really I don't see any big issues with, uh, you know, bringing this thing back to, uh, you know, a better condition. To remove the rust from the chassis itself, I use navel jelly, and the same thing with the speaker. Uh, you can see there's a lot of rust there. Uh, the dial plate holder, uh, I took a different uh, technique for that, which I'll share in just a moment. Here's a close-up look of the uh, dial plate itself. And the dial plate holder, again, I mentioned was completely rusted. I used evapo rust on it and let it soak for about 24 hours and then uh, cleaned it up with chrome polish and gave it a coat, a clear coat. Again, the uh, tuning condenser uh, in real, real bad shape. You can see it here. It's been removed from the uh, chassis and being prepared here for uh, a nice uh, soaking as well and a vapo rust uh, before uh, running the uh, variable condenser through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, which you see here, uh, probably three or four or five, six good cycles. And again, here's the uh, condenser after removing it from the uh, Vapo rust and the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, the chassis here, after the, uh, the cleaning that I referenced earlier, uh, turned out really well. And just another shot here from a different angle of the uh, chassis. Again, no paint or anything applied. A little speaker repair was required and I got that tidied up here uh, as you can see from the photos. A quick look of the uh, tuning condenser after being mounted back in the radio um, as well the uh, dial plate cover and the speaker is reattached and uh, mounted. Here's a quick look at the schematic that I used. Uh, This is the closest schematic that I could find uh, that matched the radio. And you'll notice it says automatic radio. Uh, here's a quick look at the electrolytic capacitor, and you can see the condition it was in, and here it is removed from the radio. Uh, just a couple more uh, quick shots of the underneath side of the chassis before the restoration begins. Uh, here the electrolytics have been uh, replaced in some of the capacitors at this point, and uh, here's the shot of the complete restoration. Um, all the electrolytic capacitors and paper and wax capacitors as well as out of tolerance resistors have been replaced. In addition, you'll see that I used a diode to replace the ballast tube and also a power resistor to uh, reduce the uh, voltage. So that worked out well. The ballast tube is still in the tube socket but bypassed and it's there just for aesthetic purposes only. Here's a uh, top view of the uh, radio chassis and the uh, front side of the chassis before reapplying the uh, dial plate cover. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this uh, restoration for this Remington radio from the mid-1930s. Restoration will uh, continue with the cabinets, so again, we'll wrap up here and consider this part one of part two.